Hi. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like a ham and cheese omelet and a little lamb fries. I'm sorry. We stopped serving breakfast, but we are on lunch menu now. I want breakfast. Well, you can't have it. We're not serving it. So you said. Is that the manager? Yeah. Could I speak to him, please? Sure. Rick, there's a customer that would like to speak with you. Yes, sir. Hi, I'd like some breakfast. We stopped serving breakfast. I know you stopped serving breakfast, Rick. Sheila told me to stop serving breakfast. Why am I calling you by your first names? I don't even know who you are. I still call my boss Mr. I worked for him for seven and a half years, but I walk in here all of a sudden, total stranger. I'm calling you Rick and Sheila like we're in some kind of AA meeting. I don't want to be your buddy, Rick. I just want a little breakfast. Well, you can call me Miss Folsom if you want to. Sheila. We stop serving breakfast at 11.30. Dad. Rick, have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? Yeah. Yeah, well, here I am, the customer. That's not our policy. You have to order something from the lunch menu. I don't want lunch. I want breakfast. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry, too. Oh, you're good! Oh, you're good. Oh, no, 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 get organized. Oh, 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 oh. Calm down. Just calm down, everybody. Sit down. Sit down over there. Hey, 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 hey. Mister, where are you going? No, 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 no. You sit down there and you finish your lunch. Come on. Everybody just, just relax and take it easy. Come on. What, eat your lunch, please. Eat your lunch. You all need your vitamins A's and B's and C's. It's an accident. It's an accident. It's an accident. The, the trigger, it's sensitive. It's okay. It's all right. It's just, it's a sensitive trigger. Rick, could I have my breakfast, please? Yes, sir. Sheila. Rick, Miss Folsom. Yes, sir. Yes. You know what? You were right. I think I've changed my mind. I'm gonna have some lunch. Uh, could I have a double whammy burger with cheese? You getting this? Yes, sir. And an order of whammy fries. And uh, let me see, uh, a chocolate whammy shake. Yes, sir. Should I get his order? Rick, could you get it for me, please? I feel more comfortable now calling you Rick after all we've been through together. How you doing? You enjoying your meal? How about you, son? Is it good? And you, man? How's the food? I think we have a critic. <laughs> I don't think she likes the special sauce, Rick. It's a joke. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. See, this is what I'm talking about. Turn around, look at that. You see what I mean? It's, it's plump, it's juicy, it's three inches thick. Now, look at this sorry, miserable squash thing. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? Anybody? Anybody at all? Last episode, we asked for certain information on a few cases we're working on. I want to add to that request with an appeal to the Canton police. The Canton police chief has admitted that John O'Keefe contacted the Canton police regarding drug dealing in the neighborhood. Here's the clip.
Additionally, I know it's been circulated that John O'Keefe had conversations with Kent police de detectives related to drug activity in that neighborhood. Well, I'm here to confirm that. He absolutely did. He reached out to the detective unit directly. However, none, and let me repeat that, none of his well-documented correspondence with us included anyone alleged by Aidan Kearney to be involved in this case. The point I'm trying to underscore with these statements, with the, the examples that I've put forth as well, is the same one I was trying to make in my, my initial statement. Take information in and verify it. Be patient while all aspects of the case unfold. This system is painfully slow, and it should be, as the gravity of its process holds the liberty of someone in its midst. Follow the actual trial. Listen to all the information. Let the courtroom be the forum where both sides get to present their case in full. Additionally, I know it's The Chief's words were reached out, but our source tells us it was a phone call. We're very confident in this source. The Chief uses the words conversations. Says John reached out to the detectives. Says it's well documented. She says none of the conversations involved anyone mentioned by Turtle Boy. Is this the whole story? A cop diming on drug dealers died violently a short time later? You think the citizens of Canton have no questions about that? Is the chief claiming it's all just one unfortunate coincidence? Look, because of this admission by the chief, subpoenas are coming. They're coming. So if something improper has been going on within the department, it's going to come out. Even if Karen Reed is guilty, it's going to come out. The officers present during O'Keefe's call are going to get subpoenaed. They're going to be taking the oath. The chief's admission that O'Keefe called the police to report drug activity is going to make it unavoidable. We also know for a fact, for a fact, that some of those officers are frustrated by what's going on inside the department. These are guys that got into law enforcement for the right reasons. We're asking them to reach out to us. We have no connection to the Karen's defense team. We only want the truth. We only want fairness. Reach out to us. Have a relative reach out. We'll protect identities. Give us the truth. It's going to come out anyway. If we're wrong about something, straighten us out. We want to be right. We want to be fair. And we strongly support law enforcement. Look, your chief admits John called the detectives to report drug activity in his neighborhood. If we told you about a guy in some faraway town in some distant state, a guy who worked as a cop in a nearby city, a guy who called the local police to dime out a drug dealer and who later died in that town under violent circumstances, what would you think happened to that guy? The chief says the system is painfully slow. She wants us to trust it. Well, you're on the inside. You know what's going on. Should the hardworking people of this town of Canton trust the system? Is the system watching out for them? Were the dealers John O'Keefe reported arrested? You don't have to identify the person John fingered for the dealing. We know you can't do that. But you can tell us what the reaction was inside the department when that call came in. There's no rule against that. Were they angry at John for calling? Or did the detectives hush up because they knew John was barking up the wrong tree? Was an investigation into the dealing launched? You were there. You know. The public deserves to know. If you want to really be on team good guys, come on the show yourself and tell the public what you can. You'd be breaking no laws if you explained the call and what it was about without naming anyone. If you can't come on the show, talk to us in confidence. Yes, you might piss off your supervisors, but any official who would be pissed off by that is not on Team Good Guys, which means they're exactly the people you got into law enforcement to protect the public from. Now, we have a terrible and tragic report for you on Sandra Crispo. After this clip, we're going to bring on Sandra's daughter and uh, Dave. Sandra was a beloved mother and grandmother killed for the oldest reason, greed.
Johnston are asking for the public's help to find a woman who's been missing for weeks now. Family members say she's last seen when a relative gave her a ride home. Two days later, her home was empty, the lights were on, the back door was unlocked. As Julie McDonald shows us, so far investigators are just baffled by a lack of clues. She's probably the happiest I've ever seen her. She made a room for the boys, she decorated it, she loved having them over. Every day she would, you know, look forward to her grandchildren. Sandra Crispo's three grandsons are the light of her life. Her daughter knows she would never leave them. It was very hard telling my five-year-old that Granny's not around right now. The 54-year-old Quincy native who recently relocated to Hanson hasn't been seen since Wednesday, August 7th, almost three weeks ago. Pulled up to her house. Uh, we looked in our front windows and all the lights were on. The dog had been there. The dog wasn't, it didn't have any food and any water. The back door was unlocked um, and there was no sign of her. Crispo's car was in the shop. She has no cell phone, no health issues, and she's single. Her last outgoing call was to her daughter, an ER nurse. Really, And I know that bad things happen to good people, and at this point, I feel like something bad happened to her. She essentially vanished. The family's working closely with police and believes someone knows where she is. At this point, we're desperate. Throughout these weeks, investigators have done multiple searches of the area near Sandra Crispo's home. The family fears someone may have hurt her. If you think you saw her or anything unusual, you're asked to call police. In Hanson, Julie McDonald, WBZ News. Well, the family of a missing woman in Hanson hopes that a new billboard will help spark potential new leads in her disappearance. They tell WBZ's Bill Shields they won't give up until she's found. Even after all this time, two years, it's still hard for Lena McMahon to look at the family photo album and see her mother. The pain doesn't just go away. I don't like the term closure because there is never going to be an ending to this type of grief that we deal with every single day. The missing posters are sprinkled around the South Shore. And along Route 3 in Hanover, a billboard with a photo of Sandra. She lived alone in this small, well-kept home in Hanson. Two years ago this Friday, Sandra disappeared with only the thinnest of clues. There was indication in my eyes that a struggle occurred within the home, but not enough technically per police to indicate a crime was committed inside. But state and local police have never found Sandra, and every lead ran into a wall. We've never given up trying to find Sandra. Is, is it still active investigation or are you still looking for information? It's still active and we know somebody knows something. There was no one in Sandra's life to raise suspicions. She had long ago divorced and these days spent her time taking care of her grandkids. She was very quiet. She had a few close friends but other than that lived a very simple life. Even after all this time, two years, all is not lost apparently. The family thinks there are some good leads, and so do the police. And Hanson, I'm Bill Shields, WBZ News. Hey, Dave. How are you? Dave, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you fine. What's a uh, what's an opening monologue for me without a few tech issues, right? Mm. You guys, hear me okay? There. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yep. So this is a tough case. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I just want to say before we get Lana on, um, Lena, excuse me, great opening monologue, and I couldn't. I just want to throw the quickest of two cents in. Um, we do know, obviously, that John O'Keefe made that phone call. We do know that there were Canton police officers present when that phone call came in. Where are you? Who are you? And who would who was going to man up enough and take their oath seriously enough to come and talk to somebody about it? Whether that be Turtle Boy, who's been the the authority on this case since day one, one of us, whomever. So I thought that was a really important opening monologue. Thank you for doing it, Kev. Um, as you know, you know, a lot of people come to us and talk to us about true crime stories. And um, no matter how much, how many times I talk about different cases or write about different cases, 
every single time I bring up Sandra Crispo, we get just tsunami with tips, people wanting to talk to us about it, questions. Hey, I heard this rumor. And the real reason why we wanted to bring Lena on more than anything is to combat a lot of disinformation that's out there. Like when somebody just disappeared, like Sandra did back in August of 2019, um, and there's very little that leaks out to the media about it from law enforcement sources, family sources, whomever. Um, I think that unfortunately leaves a lot open to speculation. People have nothing to do but speculate. So um, we're going to combat a lot of that today. And in, in the last you know two weeks since we brought this up, um, we've been you know, we've been really hit hard with people, you know, sending us tips, discussing the case with us, giving us rumors, you know, people from that area. Um, some people have been really great on it. People like Benjamin John, who's been great on it. So um, like anything, like my book or like any of my writing, the first thing you have to do is sort of combat this disinformation and get really down to like, all right, this is what we absolutely know is going on. So um, I hope we can clear a lot of that up with Lena, especially surrounding her husband. You know, people, people came to me and um, said things about Tim, her husband. And, you know, of course I looked into them and, and just none of them are true. And like, I, I was Googling and, you know, I'm around on the internet in the last two weeks looking at different, you know, um, websites regarding the story. And like always, 75% of the shit out there is wrong, you know, so. Um, I hope we can do a lot to clear that up uh, on YCT as we as we cover down this uh, Sandra Crispo road. So, because um, again, like you said earlier, beloved grandmother, mother missing five years. What happened? You know. So what happened? Uh, happy birthday, Aaron. Uh, to Lena was Dubs. here a moment ago. Where she's kind of here, but her camera's out. Um, so like, I'm gonna hold off Adam right. until. We can just have her voice. Yeah, I wait till yeah, I know no what's problem. going Either on. But she, we could. See, I I could see her a moment ago. Um, so not sure why she's, if but, she doesn't, if she's uh, not comfortable, if she's not comfortable being, being on film, we can just have her voice. That's fine too. No, she, um, we could see her, whatever. She, um, yeah. I mean, she, and she's in those clips we showed there too. So she's very comfortable on film, I think, and very articulate. Um, so I don't know if there's a technical glitch, but well, we, I can let her in and we can ask her and oh, she's gone now. So she may be, re yeah. she, maybe she's going to reset. Um, to people who would never use StreamYard, I feel like the first time you use it is a nightmare. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The first time yeah. I ever used StreamYard was a nightmare for me too, especially if Why you're trying you... to get on on your phone or whatever. So, um, for those people that aren't fully, aren't really familiar well, with the case and they got a little bit of a taste from the clip, but why don't you bring people in through the story of what happened? If you can, Dave, if you have that um, handy yeah, in front sure. of you or. Yeah, no, I can recall it just from memory. Well, first of all, it's kind of a personal story because my wife came home to me one time. My wife works in healthcare. She worked with um, Sandra's daughter. And she came home to me and she just mentioned offhand, like, hey, this really sweet nurse that I work with, uh, her mom's missing. And I was like, oh, there's Lena. And um, yeah, I don't see an image yet. So it's she may be having a connectivity wife. issue. Crap. Can you still hear me, Kev? I can hear you. Yeah. Yep. It's loading. So, you know. My wife came home to me and she's like, this really sweet nurse that I work with, um, her mom's oh, missing. there she is. And um, I was like, wow, you know, that's crazy, you know. And, you know, I let it go uh, for a couple hey, of days. Hey, and, I, you know, I figured, mm -hmm. who knows, you know. Hey, Hi, guys. Yeah, right. I just Lena's here, so I just wanted to. Um, hey, Lana. She got in. Hey. Lena, um, my name is Kevin. I just thank you for coming on. Um, sorry, yeah, I can see her. Hey, Lana, I, how are you? I, I, Can can you hear me, Lena? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, good. I What's just that? want to say, so I mean, I, I Dave's going to be fine. doing uh, talking to a I'm lot because he knows the. Um, I just want to say I'm I'm hey, very Lana. sorry for what you went through, and I, I, I don't. I'm ver I'm very sorry for what you went through, and um, I look going through the images today to set this up. I mean, your grandmother. I'm mean, sorry, your mom was incredibly beautiful woman, and. She, she has, a, I have an image here I'm going to put in the slide that shows her as a young woman, I guess, holding you, and just a really, really beautiful woman. Yeah, um, um, yeah. But let me. Uh, 
So let me let me let. Obviously, you've been speaking to Dave. Dave's done really good investigative work on this. So I'm going to let Dave talk to you. I just wanted to introduce myself and thank you for coming on. And I know it takes an incredible amount of courage to do what you're doing. And I hope things work out for you and and your family. Hey, Lana. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think the internet's a little. Oh yeah, we have terrible internet they today. Do. Terrible internet. Can you hear me fine, Lana? Oh my God. So I don't know. Nasty. I can hear you, Dave. I'm not sure Kevin, if can Lena hear can hear me. I can hear you, yes. Lena, can you hear me or? All right. We have such bad internet. I don't, is I don't it, know what's is, going on. Is she frozen? I can't. It looks like the screen is frozen on her end. Yeah, she's totally frozen. She's totally frozen. Uh, oh, and she and made. You know, did um, you tell her not to? Kevin. Did you tell her not to put on Facebook? So because there's there's a delay. Um, she should be just on the stream. Yeah, let me make sure she knows. Yeah, just g give her a um, give her a quick shout out on that to make sure that she's just on the stream yard and not on YouTube either, because that would be tying up all her bandwidth too. Yeah. It's almost better, in my opinion, sometimes to have it just on um, just on my phone. I, I like joining by my phone when I join people. Yeah. It's just easier. And um, computers are such a pain in the ass. So I'll, I'll get her back. Um, yeah. So anyway, what was I saying? Yeah. So, you know, what, Christina came home. She's like, wow, this really sweet nurse that works with me. Her, her mom's missing. And um, let's just check in like, again, Dave. Incredible. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but Lena's. Um, let's make sure she can hear us. I can hear you guys now. Sorry. Okay. That's good. Kind of shoddy. Don't don't have the YouTube or the Facebook on. Just um, go straight through the stream, and I think yes. I think I think we'll be okay. Yep, I'm on okay. that. Okay, very good. Plus, Thank the you. Minute, um, the, minute, the minute you come on with us, it's it's it absolutely has to happen that there's technical issues. So yeah, absolutely, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> goes with us singing. Yeah. How you doing? Good? But I can hear everybody and thanks for having How are me. You I appreciate it, honestly. This is great exposure, I think. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Of course. Yeah, I can hear you fine. There's so much lag, Lana, so I might ask you things and you might not get them for a minute, so just hang in there with me, okay? Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um. So I was just telling everybody, you know, we've been talking about the case for like a month on and off with mom. Um, every time that we talk about the case, I get inundated with questions about your mom, people reaching out to me via email saying, could you please look into that case? Like you've done great work on other stuff and like Sandra's been missing. We hear nothing. And, um, and I started to think like, you know, I know obviously my wife and you had worked together at one point. She had been the one who basically told me about what happened with your mom. Um, and I thought maybe I should reach out to you because when I read about your mom's case, um, I feel like the very little that is out there about your mom is really untrue. A lot of it is untrue. And a lot of the things that pe people come to me and say to me about your mom's case never seem to make sense or ever pan out when I check into them. So uh, I wanted to bring you on so we could at least talk a little bit about what your mom was like as a person, what happened when she disappeared and, and where things might stand present day. So I really appreciate it. If you could, um, as you have in the past with me, tell me a little bit about mom before the disappearance here. Well, Sandra, she was 54 years old. She recently moved from Quincy, Massachusetts to her current residence in Hanson, Massachusetts. She'd been living there since approximately the end of April. We purchased the property and she was there about four months prior to her disappearance. Um, she was content. She was very happy with her new home. She loved being close to the boys. I have three kids. So like her main job, she she didn't work. So her main job was essentially nannying those boys. And she was very involved. And it truly was like her passion to raise the boys. And my son is nine. He was just eating pasta the other day. He's like, Gra Grammy taught me how to twirl it up with like the spaghetti. It's just certain things they say, it just, 
it it hits hard especially when you're little kids and this unresolved grief is such a difficult thing for me to process never mind my young kids like i'm like buddy it's confusing for me and now you know they're they're afraid something's going to happen to me they're, they're I'm, i wish i could give them more guidance but at the end of the day i'm like it's an awful situation but just being strong as a family together is all we can really do to kind of help with our, our grieving and all that. Sandra was, she, again, like I said, primarily the, the boys were her, were her life. That was my wedding. And my little guy was only about 15 months. And she, she loved him. She chased him the whole party. <laughs> and there's a, there's a picture of your mom there, your brother and you. And um, I, in the, in the last picture was a picture of, of you and um, I think that was your husband there. Yeah. And um, your husband was the last person to see her. He dropped her off at home. Yeah. Um, he had, you needed a, she had some work. Yeah. She had a, um, she had an issue with her car and it needed to be repaired. So my husband and I are good friends mm -hmm. with a mechanic down the road. So we prearranged for her vehicle to get serviced. Um, so I was at work, you know, they went, picked up, he picked up her and the kids. And then um, my husband followed her back to the mechanic shop, left the car and then they drove back. They were seen on film at a Cumberland's farms. Her only was request was to get cigarettes because she was a smoker. So they had made a quick pick, pit stop at the Cumberland Farms, got cigarettes, they dropped her off. And then it was the next day that I tried to contact her as she was supposed to watch the boys that following uh, Friday. So Wednesday was the last time we saw her. I attempted to call her Thursday and she did not answer that Thursday. That Thursday. So tell us a little bit like about your mom too. What's really strikes me about mom is that she, your mom was a simple person. She didn't necessarily care Very for simple. didn't have a cell phone. Things. Yeah, no, she she was very, very simple. She liked to be to herself. You know what I mean? She didn't have this huge group of social situations. Like she was close to a couple of family members, but pretty much stuck to herself and, and very private and liked being, you know, six minutes away from me and my boys. And she made them a room in her house. And she was the, mo the most happy I've ever seen her in a while. And I can honestly say that because she did have episodes where she had depression and struggled like a lot of us do. But I've witnessed her overcome a lot of things. And right. I witnessed her passion as a grandmother. And it, it it did open my eyes to, you know, just how precious her time with them really meant to her. And, you know, it's just, I can't believe that this has been four years of, of living. Mm -hmm. But we're working. And La Lana, you mentioned that, um, I saw in that news clip that when you got to the, Sorry, what was that? Hey, sorry, Lana. There's a little, there's a little bit of a lag, so I apologize. You mentioned in that news clip that we played at the top that after you realized that your mom was missing, she didn't answer you for a couple of days. That was very much unlike her. She was obviously ready to watch the kids while you and your husband were at work, and that you know there might have been some signs of a struggle. Is is that true information? Was was there some signs of a struggle? Did you see that or was that in the police report or? Initially, there wasn't an obvious sign that there was a crime committed. But after like, you know, a good amount of time had passed and uh, me and Maureen Hancock, the psychic, were actually in her house and we were kind of going through things and she kind of noticed mm -hmm. there was a little bit of, you know, blood spatter that appeared to indicate a struggle had occurred. We said that it wasn't enough to indicate a crime was committed within our home, but I think, you know, a former ER experience, a lot of years, I think that there was definitely a struggle of some sort. He hadn't been there for that long, so I really wouldn't expect any of all 
want it to be in the places that it was. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there's a, there's a, um, just to clear up again, something that I see often in the ether, your mom moved from Quincy. She had sold the house. I think you guys were in the in-house neck, right? Yeah. Um, and she moved to, she moved to Hanson to be, to be closer to you and the kids, right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And reg regarding her, the, day that around the time that she disappeared or that that day for instance when you realized it um did did the police say anything to you about what where where their theory might be at this time i mean we're four years on now i obviously don't want you to tell me too too much you know to, to jeopardize anything but right do they no. have a theory right now that you feel like is a good one i believe they know who is responsible i think it's maybe we have a lot of circumstantial but we just don't have physical mm -hmm. evidence massachusetts it's extremely hard to convict especially without a body as we know um mm -hmm. i think they I'm, I'm very in touch with the plymouth county da's office i'm in close contact with them as well as hanson police um so they keep me in the loop as much as they can without compromising the integration of the investigation. But I mm -hmm. do think they, they, you know, somebody knows what happened. I think, I think police are, are still working it. I think it's just, yeah. there's some loopholes that make yeah, it just, difficult for yeah. them. A lot of people aren't really forthcoming with the police. And so it's making it challenging. Sorry, you're so, um, there's so much lag. It's hard for me to know when you stop and start. So I don't want to talk over you. Um, yeah, we're four years, you know, we're almost five years, I guess, coming up. Um, yeah, I, we just, just had your years. mom's anniversary recently. August, it was. Yeah, just four years. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Has the, has the scope of the investigation changed as much as you can tell me? Like, is there the same guys working on it from Hanson or is it now just a total state police thing or is it both? It's technically both. So that I reached out to the DA's office about 54 days into the case. You know, I believe that there was foul play and mm -hmm. I don't think Hanson, you know, had enough resources. So I reached out to Tim Cruz, who's the DA for the mm -hmm. Plymouth County. He was very receptive. Within an hour, he responded personally with a phone call and told me that the police, the state police, would be leading the investigation. There had been contact throughout, uh, even early on in the investigation, Hanson and state police were in contact. But I think it wasn't until I kind of pushed for the DA's office because I just knew I I knew this wasn't like her. This was out of character. She would never go anywhere. She was very much a homebody. Instantly, it was alarming to me. Instantly. So they have been great. You know, they, they're, again, they're, they're only limited to so much without actually finding her, unfortunately. It's, it's hard. Is there any new information on suspects or motives that we can talk about well i think ultimately i think she was target over something she didn't have i think you know the family essentially kind of wacky when sorry that's all right dave's switching up but i can, I can still hear you lena no uh, it, it there was a lot of turmoil revolving my grandfather's inheritance and the contents of it and how it should have been dispersed. That was something that I wasn't directly involved in because it was mainly the siblings. But after that, you know, a lot of people changed. And I noticed a lot of people's priority wasn't actually finding my mother. It was more like, who can they blame or, you know, more about money versus an actual human life. Mm -hmm. It's been very frustrating because I've I haven't really honestly felt supported by anybody there. Like nobody ever reaches out. Like you know, we were 
I was looking in swamps up to my waist for my mom. I'm like, me and my husband, me and my friends in kayaks and in, in dogs. It's it's been a, a hell of a four years to be honest, and it's frustrating for us not being able to to get these answers, but knowing that I'm not going to stop and and I'm going to keep pushing through until we get answers. That's my ultimate goal for my mom. Can yeah. you tell us, can you tell us anything else about the inheritance issue? I, I, mean, I know you, all I can things. Say is that, you know, it changed a lot of people, you know, from an outsider looking in, I, I saw, you know, you see how a little bit of money affects normal families. And, you know, we're talking about a lot of money and, and some not so nice people. And ultimately, I think I don't, I wish I could say for certain, but I just feel like she was targeted for something that she definitely didn't have. Guys, is there any I'm evidence? Sorry, the, uh, the lag is because was because of me. I switched my cell phone. I greatly apologize. And for the viewers, because um, we want Lena to be able to tell the story of her mom, because it's very important. I don't think... I don't know if you see the comments, Lena, but there's tons of people reaching out, offering condolences and their support for you, which is ultimately- I appreciate it, honestly. All we care about. I have seen so much support from actually complete strangers who I've formed great friendships with because, you know, in, in the area and people just literally strangers have reached out offering to help and they've been on searches with me and it's really humbling. It really is. I said the same thing to Dave the other day, like, it's humbling even you reaching out, offering to try to help. Like, this is great. It's great exposure. You know, it's it's awesome. So I'm very appreciative. I kind of went under the radar for a few because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm still a mom. I'm still a wife. I'm still a nurse. So I, I have a lot of – it never goes away. There's not a day that I don't think about it. But, right. you know, also – I am pushing so hard in the background more than anybody knows. So I know, you know, and uh, it's, just, for this. it's so great to hear that, you know, do you think, um, do you think we might get a resolution to this someday sooner than later? Um, I am a firm believer that, you know, what goes around definitely comes around. I've always believed in my heart that she will be found. Um, I wish it, I wish it didn't happen at all, but I didn't think four years later I'd be sitting here without answers. But I do, I do believe that, you know, if I keep pushing and law enforcement keeps working, I do believe that eventually one day we'll have justice. And I hope for that. I hope for my mom's case. Do you have, um, just one of the few, last few questions for me. Do you have any idea of where, where your mom might be, where her body might be? Do you have, I mean, is that anything that's crossed your mind? I mean, it's definitely crossed my mind. I can't even drive to work without looking on the side of the highway for a gray stretcher because that's the last she was wearing. We couldn't find her shoes. We couldn't find her purse. And she didn't have her wallet with her. So it's almost like she intentionally might have left. But I believe that she was left against her own, you know, own uh, she was taken out. Mm -hmm. but we can't find her shoes or her purse. So those items were never recovered from her home. So I, like I said, I can't drive to work without looking on the side of the highway or when they're cleaning up trash, like please find something. But right. I've looked in swamps. I've looked in a five mile radius from her home, pretty, pretty tight in a lot of different areas. And I mean, I wish I, I could say for sure where she's at, but even the detective said to me, it's like a needle on a haystack, really. it's She could be in a million different places, but I do believe that she will be found eventually. So do you have reason to believe she knew her abductors? Well, can I piggyback on that question, Elena? Um, just because we want to get it all, that's a great question. Do, do you think mom would let anyone in the house who she didn't know? Awesome. Yeah, there was, I looked at her, I got her call log from her incoming phone calls prior to the night of her disappearance. There wasn't any unusual incoming or outgoing phone calls, like somebody phoning to say that he was there. You know, I know her car wasn't there. So all I can think right. of, maybe somebody didn't realize she was there. 
But then again, the lights were on when I was there the next the, that Friday. The lights were still on, which indicated to me that you know she obviously got in the house when Tim dropped her off around five. It was August, so it was still pretty light out. So Friday, when I went in, the AC was on, all the lights were on. The dog, who was normally very flighty, he was cowered in a chair. He knew something. He knew something. Yeah. Did she normally keep the door locked? She, yes, like very much. Like my husband and I hung blackout curtains for her when she moved in. She, and I said to her, I'm like, mom, you like came from Quincy. Why are you afraid now? You're in Hanson. You're on a yeah. tiny little dead end street. Yeah. And she just was like, she was very much a homebody. She, she would never really open the door to strangers. If anything, she was adverse. She was like untrusting, which. Yeah. Did she have a big social circle outside of you and the kids or no? No, she really didn't. Um, a couple friends, but mainly, you know, her sister and her cousin, Therese, she was really close to who she unfortunately passed away last year, but yeah. she was pretty private and not a small circle. Have you guys done any searches recently? I was just thinking we were talking about it. Um, few of us and a bunch of our, our viewers, you know, thinking about organizing something in Hanson, maybe to, to yeah. again, get some people talking again about your mother's case. Well, absolutely. Yeah. No, I went to every neighbor the, you know, a few days after her disappearance. I knocked on everybody's on everybody's door that had a ring camera. And unfortunately, a lot of them weren't working was right. general consensus. But I went door to door saying, did you see anything? You know, she lives on a tiny street. It's essentially like a dirt road dead end. So mm -hmm. I, the close houses are really close. And I, I sometimes that struggles with me. Like nobody heard oh, or yeah, yeah. saw yes. something, but I think maybe they did. And, you know, they reported whatever they heard or saw to law enforcement, but and law enforcement. it's a tight street. And, and Right. It is. I've been on your mom's street. It mm -hmm. is. I was there in broad daylight when your mom, uh, you know, basic, you know, same type of um, conditions that when your mom went missing, essentially. And it, it was really hard for me to imagine in my mind how sh if that could have happened and someone not see anything when I look at how tight the street is. Right, exactly. You know? And a lot of the neighbors were like calling the police when I was searching in the beginning, like they're, they didn't want, you know, any any sort of media down there, which I get, it's invasive, but at the end of the day, we're talking about the love of a missing woman and mm -hmm. it was a little odd after, but some of them have, have been supportive, but it's just, I was so, a so daughter doing what I had to do to try right. to find my mom, I get it. I'm right. in the woods behind their house, like I'm everywhere. Like it's, it's not where I want to be either. But. Right, right. Sorry, is, no, the, it, is the prevailing assumption that she got in a vehicle with someone or was forced into a vehicle? I I can't say for sure. I don't know. I I know we were unable to recover the fitted bed sheet. And underneath her bed, it almost looked like all the slats were off. Like either somebody tried to lift up the mattress or if there was a struggle. Yeah. It, again, these are things that I kind of noticed after, you know, taking a step back and actually physically getting down on my hands and knees and, you know, discovering what we did discover. It, the house was definitely processed very thoroughly. Um, so whatever forensic evidence they were able to collect, um, I, I know for sure they got stuff. And that's an important point that you brought up that I don't, I think is underreported. Your mom had a bed sheet that was fitted to her bed that was gone and missing, correct, yeah. Lana? Yes. So we do have a piece of physical evidence that is presumably somewhere, and you wow. knew that that existed. So. Right. And there was a purse like on our bed that had a couple of spatters, like blood drops. It was mm -hmm. like a straw purse. It, it almost looked like somebody was looking in it. Okay. That's see that like I don't see that in any, you know, it would just you know tertiary Google searches about the case. Yeah, no, it's something I haven't been very public with, but at the end of the day, police have an investigation and I very much respect the integrity of the investigation. I know things, as much as I would love it to be very quick, I know these things take time. And ultimately I'm okay with taking as much time as we need 
as long as this is going to help build a strong case. So hopefully, eventually, convict somebody. What, was yeah. the inheritance something that was in the bank where somebody could have forced her to give over information to get access to, you know, her bank uh, account or? No, my grandfather collected coins and, and gold, quite frankly. So how it was supposed to be dispersed against the siblings, that's the siblings issue. But I know shortly after my grandfather died, it was... You know, there was a lot of people perseverating on on gold and contents of will and stuff that was way over my head, and my mom never even cared about it. Out of all of them, she really, right? She didn't have any interest in that as as much as the others did. That's she another have put some away for like the kids' college fund or something, right? I mean, right, or just to retire and to live yeah. comfortably. Like my grandfather was a pretty deep. I, I don't know what he did on the side, but he was a pretty smart man financially because he he set them all up for success. But what they did with the money, I chose to do with the money, is it's none of my business. So it was not an official inheritance where it came in a will. It was just something that he made sure she got. I'm not exactly sure. I know he had a will, and I, I'm not really sure the contents of it, but mm -hmm. I know there was a part of it was money. So... Yeah, yeah. So there was something physical, you know, that you the people, you know, maybe your mom had a hold of. So we just want to make sure we make those important points, but don't don't right. go yeah. into it. And um, yeah, that's uh, it's it's impossible for me to fathom, as I've said to you multiple times. And another thing that you said to me the other day that really really bothered me that I wanted to discuss with you, if I could, and and put out into the into the world, is the the silly accusations that get thrown at people that you're closest to. And I've listened to interviews with your husband and um, it seems to me like this guy is ripped apart by the fact that his mother-in-law is missing. Oh yeah. And, um, the fact that anybody would ever throw an accusation his way or do something to, you know, uh, say something negative on his character. Right. Really, oh, really no, fact no factual basis. Just pure like, yeah. Oh, she was the last person. He was the last person to see her. It has nothing to do with it. Him and my three kids, which they did three days a week, dropped her off. Right. Well, my three kids looked and said, bye, Granny, right before she walked into the house. Like, it's completely not on any factual basis. And it's actually very distracting from the actual truth. My goal is to call my mother. And police know that, you know, my husband's cell phone was there for 52 seconds in the amount of time it takes to drop someone off. Like, it's, mm -hmm. that's the furthest from my mind. What's on my priority is actually continuing to put her name out there, continuing to fight, and continuing to have close contact with police and officials and hopefully eventually get resolution for this case because... I know we all deserve it. It's been it's been a lot of, long four years, but ultimately, Sandra deserves answers. Because at the end of the day, Sandra's still a person. Yeah. Is there anybody out there that you think might know something that you want to make a direct appeal to to say, "Hey, come on, we need your help. Do the right thing." I think there are definitely people living with themselves every day, knowing exactly what they did, and I think the weight of that carrying that around has to be substantial. I think living with yourself day to day, that weight and that burden can't be healthy. Like if anything, if you are involved or if you know anybody that's involved, please do the right thing. Like you'll probably feel much better about yourself. I couldn't imagine living with that immense burden. Right. Somebody how many, is. How, how many people would have known about a potential inheritance that she had, something that was handed down of value from her father. How many people would have known? Was this something that she told people or would it have been just family members? My mother really wouldn't have told anybody. No, but, you know. So just, just family members. I think primarily who they told them not for, but. There was one thing I wanted to ask you about, if I could, and I don't want to keep you too, too long, because I know this is so heavy for you to talk about, and I appreciate you giving us any, any bit of your time. Mm -hmm. There was a news report that somebody had come by your mom's house and left a note there. Um, 
Was that simply just to talk about maybe somebody locally who had been released from prison? Because again, many people have brought this to my attention and I feel like it is like almost become the main theory in the case. And I'd love to debunk yes. it if I possibly could. And initially during the initial part of the investigation, uh, one of the men who lived, you know, close proximity to the house, somebody had delivered a handwritten note and placed it under my mom's statue. And I had a ring camera at that point. So I, we went to the house, we retrieved the note, we brought it to the Hampton police, but it was basically somebody essentially accusing somebody in the neighborhood, but that ended up turning out to be false leads, um, mm -hmm. whatever. That was kind of a rabbit hole down the wrong way. Sure. Initially, I thought that was a great possibility because again, initially I'm like, she's just been here for months. Like she walked her dog in the neighborhood. Like, did somebody see her? Did somebody do something? Like, I didn't know, you know, I, all I knew is we weren't familiar with that neighborhood. And it was, that was the only thing that I could think of in the, initially. And then getting that, but that ended up to being debunked. I, I appreciate it, Lena. I appreciate you giving us a little bit of your time on a Saturday night. Um, perhaps we need to um, organize some YCT uh, viewers to head out to Hanson and, uh, Maybe do a search for mom, maybe do a little something for mom to get people talking in the town again, because somebody knows something. And somebody knows something. We're doing all we can uh, behind the scenes. Right. No, I totally appreciate everything you guys are doing. And again, just even giving this the time of day. I've been on every news station, but you know that only goes so far at the end of the day. Like I said, people are living with themselves and you know, you just hope that they do the right thing. Was there any surveillance on the street that might have picked up a vehicle going down at that time, especially where it's dead end street? So I know police, you know, patrolled over 200 houses on foot after what they were able to obtain. Again, they're, they kind of keep a lot of things close to the vest. They, sure, you know, sure. they tell me yeah. a good amount of things, but, you know, specific details like that, you know, I know they were working on cell phone records and all that from, you know, the time and, we handed everybody in the family handed over their their phone, you know, initially on an investigation. Which yeah, take it. I gave them my smartphone from like 2010. I'm like, take this. Yeah, take them all, right? It doesn't turn on, but you can take it. No, and <laughs> they were very thorough. Did everybody in your family turn over their cell phone, Lena? Everybody eventually did. Okay, um, yeah. I just want to make that crystal clear to everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe we should. It'd be great to get out to Hanson. And, uh, I think it's a great idea. I think kind of re-canvassing from the start. Yep, talk to people. And uh, that's sort of the best way to get information. In my, in my years of experience, is just getting on the ground, talking to people who are there. You know, people are scared to come out publicly. Right. They're scared to write emails because there's paper trails. You know, when people know, think the conversation only exists in that moment between you two, they're much more forthcoming with information. Lana, I'm so, thanks so much for joining us. No, I love appreciate you. it, Dave and Kevin. Thank you for having me. We love your family. Christina sends her love to you. And um, we're going to do all we can to get this thing talked about as much as humanly possible and get a resolution for you and your family. I appreciate it. You're welcome back anytime, Lena. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Have a great Saturday. Thanks. Oh, oh, I, I sorry, Dave. <laughs> it moved. Guys, I really apologize to the viewers. Um, my internet is shit tonight because we're having a bit of rain out here. Um, that's Lana. Um, it takes a lot of courage for her to come and talk about her missing mother. She's never gotten, um, you know, four, four years now, just had the anniversary, no, no resolution, no nothing. Um, no good solid leads uh, that have been talked about publicly anyway. Um, we are doing some stuff behind the scenes with Lana and with Lena, excuse me, I wanna say her name right. And I, we think that there's much more to come on this, but we don't wanna say anything yet because you, there's so many bad things that can happen from reporting on things when investigations are ongoing and there's no benefit to it right now. Um,
but rest assured things are a lot further along i think now than i think they were two three years ago obviously so and this poor girl her grandkids her husband husband getting thrown accusations at him online it just makes me sick uh, this guy did nothing wrong. He's he's done nothing but good things in his life. He's been a law-abiding citizen, you know, um, and it's just unfair. And I really hope that this conversation does a, a lot to debunk a lot of the bullshit that's out there regarding a missing woman, a 54-year-old woman. So um, I think well, she obviously, she also had to be very subtle and careful, but she, if you read between the lines, she was pretty clear. If you if you can read between the lines, what when it, what happened here? Mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say more than that. So yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot going on. It's at you know when I first again I, I you know speculation is what it is. It's worthless, right? But when this first happened, when Christina came home and told me, "Hey, girl at my work's mom is missing." I was like, wow, that's wild. You know, I thought maybe she wandered off. Maybe she's a little older. They put out a silver alert. They find her. But when it got to be one week, two weeks, nothing, you know, I, my thought always is initially a sex crime, right? Who's in the area, you know, right. and, you know, let's look at who's been recently released from Bridgewater or whatever. She's right down the street from treatment center. Yeah. Um, and and it, I can tell you, I think I can make this proclamation and be very confident in it. it it's not that. This is someone close to her. No. So no, uh, Lena made that pretty clear. She was obviously being careful, but um, it was kind of interesting that the family member all eventually gave over their phones. Mm -hmm. I would think there'd be geofence data on this too, right? Um, to check if, what. Well, if Michael Proctor worked the case, then they probably haven't submitted for it yeah. yet. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, if, unless they were smart enough not to bring their phone to whatever happened, right. you know, it's just pure speculation. But um, also, phones get destroyed and. You use a burner phone is it's just tough and you know i've been on that street where lena's mother you know was last seen kevin i'm telling you these houses are right on top of each other and it's broad daylight august when this lady disappeared so it would be it's just so when we stand there together i which i hope we do you're gonna look at it and go how the fuck is this possible that somebody could it, i don't know it, it, it's just impossible that someone couldn't have seen that you know, it so. does. It sounds like there was a violent attack inside the house, um, based on the missing sheet, the damage to the bed, and the blood drops. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's terrible to say, but it sounds like somebody wounded or dead was being carried out when that sheet, right? Am I? I mean, that's that's the dots that I would connect, but I don't. I've been wrong. I mean, listen, we're both in this business. We've both been. No, I, and I hate you. Don't want to speculate. I mean, with someone, yeah. I mean, I, but I'm just. You can't help thinking that way. And I'm sure mm -hmm. Lane is thinking the same thing, you know, yeah. <clears throat> but it makes it a different kind of thing. You you know, if you're talking someone into the car at gunpoint or whatever, it's different than if you're carrying a body into a car. Um, I don't know. It sounds like she's confident in the police. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I guess, uh, you know, she hasn't seen a lot of what has <coughs> gone on recently. Um, where they're all different departments they may have been a very yeah. they may be a very good department there or she may also be reluctant to criticize them while the investigation is yeah. heating up i think i would be frankly um, if it was my mom that said um hansen anybody who knows the town i mean that might be the only missing person from hansen maybe ever i mean they just there's it's a very quiet small town you know so i'm sure uh, you know, I haven't heard of a, a disappearance in Hanson ever. You know, maybe there's one 30, 40 years ago, whatever. This is the biggest case in the history of that town. So they must be throwing every resource on it, you know? Um, it almost yeah. sounded like Lena was discovering this evidence on her own inside the apartment, you know, like the, like the disturbed boards on the bed and mm -hmm. the blood drops. I, I got to think they saw some of that, but I mean, I don't know. Well, she yeah. said they went over the apartment, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's a crazy story, and hopefully we're getting closer to a revolution, resolution, and um, that's what we want to do here. We want to talk about, you know, we want to bring these people on so we can have a rejuvenation of interest in these cases. Melissa, I know Mara Murray was from um, Hanson, but she didn't technically disappear from Hanson. I mean, she disappeared up in New Hampshire, but I know her family was from Hanson. Yeah, uh, that's mm -hmm. true. Um, my assumption is that... Um, 
Sandra Crispo disappeared in the town. You know, she wasn't taken out of town lines, but who knows? Um, who knows? But maybe we need to get out there. We need to get out to Hanson and, um, you know. Well, I think we have a good idea based on that interview who the suspects are. Mm -hmm. And so then you just kind of look where they lived at the time, mm -hmm. where they were staying. And then you wonder if someone, if a body was going to be dumped, it might be en route, right? Somewhere roughly en route. That's that's where I would look. I mean, right. But where I don't know. I mean, is it a heavily wooded area? I know a lot of people have come forward and talked about cranberry bogs. Did they disappear to another? Did they get out to another town? You know, in the South Shore. Um, it's a big net you could cast. You know, looking for a body, but you would think somebody would find it by now. You know what I mean? I'm always of the mind that like bodies get found unless they're buried, you know, bodies get found. I mean, you look at all these cases, you know, a jogger, a hunter, a fisherman, you know, finds it. And, um, yeah. We're I mean, B BL is saying this is over money. And I think that's kind of what Lena was saying. And the question is, if you go, so that's why I was asking about the bank account. Of We already know that it's probably something else, but you know, when you go in there looking for money, are you trying, is it hidden? Are you trying to force the person to, to give it up to you or, or, or are they stealing it from the house? So was money or whatever wealth we're talking about was taken, you know, she mentioned coins. Was that taken from the house? Um, did Sandra have it stored somewhere else? Right. I don't know. Those are all questions that hopefully we'll get answered on one day. And you're right, BL, follow the money, right? Always follow the money. It's always about the money. But to think that, you know, a human being, you know, and I know my wife would probably trade me for a couple bucks, which who could blame her? But I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I don't know. I guess that's just uh, um, what makes us different between us and the people that we try to track down here is that, you know, the not, no ability to care, you know, no ability to feel sympathy for another person. It's just pure um, greed and selfishness. And here we are um, with a family with no answers for four years. So. Um, mm -hmm. we will do more on Sandra. Um, we, I am currently doing, that's, you know, one of the main things that I'm working on right now is figuring out who's who, why's what, and where is it all headed and where's it going. And I will report more to you guys when I can, when I can. And, yeah. um, now's not the time, but the time will be soon, hopefully. Okay. All right. Anything else we need to go over Dave, or we want to let this, go, let this go. Um, in this episode uh, here uh, anybody have any questions anything anything if you pre-ordered my book and you were one of the first 50 to do it you get a signed copy congrats um happy birthday to aaron happy saturday to you guys i got nothing um we'll be out shooting again uh next week right uh yeah. and uh we have some interesting places we're gonna go but those are things we won't be able to report on right away um but thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you again. What do we do? Mo Monday, right? Yeah, we'll do Monday. Um, I just want to answer Olive's question. You would probably offload it um, at a pawn shop, which I'm sure they checked into. Or they clean the money at uh, casinos. A lot of people do that. And Julio Suave, um, she did not have her car. They wouldn't have to have sent her car because just before she disappeared her car was actually taken to the mechanic because she had a very loud exhaust. So she was carless at the time getting a ride from her, um, her son-in-law who dropped her off at home with the, uh, um, the promise of seeing you the next morning to drop the kids off to watch them. So, um, yeah, pawn shops, a lot of people clean their money at casinos. Casinos do that. They take the coins, they take gold. Uh, they, you have, there's exchanges in there. There's one at twin river. You walk in, you dump it and you get the money back. So, um yeah yeah more to come more to come on sandra we, we're just getting started as they say thank you kev well we want to do an episode erin told me about a really interesting case uh when i saw erin at her birthday party today she was talking about this case i don't even know where it was but where some some guy who had went out on one date with a woman and the woman you know wanted nothing to do with him after that put himself inside i guess shortly after the woman's mother died he lived in her walls.
for like weeks or months or something like that wow. and was like haunting her he was literally haunt this is apparently a 100 percent true story and so the woman had to call the police and of course when the police came he didn't make any noise um so they kept coming in and she actually started to believe that she was being haunted you know and it was so a, i want a guy what's that it was a guy? oh the the, yeah, it was a guy, and he lived in the walls, and apparently he's in jail, but is going to be getting out soon, according to Aaron. So this is a story we want to get. Apparently, it wasn't very widely reported, and to me, this almost sounds like something you could easily turn into a movie, you know? Wow. This guy was living in the walls, but... Uh, sounds like my ex, MJ Monroe says. <laughs> <laughs> he's oh, haunting man. there. Hey, one yeah. other thing. The other night, we made we did a live for an appeal on information. And you guys are so amazing that immediately I was slammed with lots of great information, especially regarding uh, this teacher, uh, this pedophile teacher named John Blake uh, in Duxbury. And um, those people are starting to come out of the woodwork now and talk to me. Um, I'm, I'm, I just want to say thank you guys, because immediately I'm crushed with all kinds of great information in every single case someone knows something and it's amazing to see all the people who see this hear this get told about this from a friend whatever and then boom it's right in my inbox so thank you guys um was the guy's name dave mj monroe wants to know who's living in the walls was it i don't know his name man is, is aaron still here uh yeah aaron, aaron, aaron no but we want to do an episode on that and aaron's very excited about the episode that she's worked really hard on I forget the name. It's some. I think it's a. Uh, I don't know if it's a child or a student that disappeared in Virginia. Um, yeah, Taylor Beal. So we get that. Name. It's good stuff. It's really good stuff. You guys are gonna love it. Erin is really smart at this shit, and she's far more talented than I am. And um, it's a great case. And you know, we have so many cool things that we're doing right now. So with the crime desk, we're gonna do. Um, I mean, just just keep your eye on us. Yeah, we're starting something a week from Monday. We're pretty excited about it's going to be, we're not sure the exact name yet, but something that's going to be the YCT Daily Crime Desk. And we're just going to bring people the latest. New, it won't be live, but it'll kind of feel like it's live. They'll be recorded every day. And just a quick 15, 20 minute story that'll bring in the, the, the top stories from the day in the world of crime, world of true crime. I'm not even sure what the difference is between true crime and crime. I'm told there's a difference, but. Um, so anyways, um, we think it's going to be really good, and we're bringing on a, a couple of teams from Vegas and, and other stuff. So we have some interesting things in the works, and thank you guys for sticking with us, and uh, we're just going to keep getting better and better. Keep getting better. I apologize, guys, for the lag issue. My internet sucked tonight. Lena was great. Um, and the answer is yes, they do check. And with the Inflation Reduction Act, now they have to report it to the IRS when you turn in gold. It's a whole fucking thing. And that would mean – I don't think it was done there. It was probably done either out of state or, um, or um, you know, at casinos. And you're very welcome, Suzanne Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you, Kev. See you guys soon. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good night.